Well, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Jeff Bowles out of Good Samaritan Baptist Church. Hope everyone's had a good night and a good night's rest and and uh, pray that everything's going good for you today. Pray the good Lord will bless you all day today and you'll have a good day in the Lord. And uh, we are out of Good Samaritan Baptist Church in Asheboro, North Carolina. This is an outreach ministry of our church. This is our midweek a remote service and now pastor we've we've prayed about this and we've changed this up and and everything a couple times so we're going to try this in the mornings a little while and uh, and everything and uh I, this will be the only time that i'm on today unless we need to come on for some special reason uh some prayer time or something like that someone needs in need of prayer but we are on this morning and uh uh, feel free to watch this anytime during the day and everything, but uh, this will be, as far as I know, the last time we'll be on for the day and everything, and uh, it's good to see Miss Margaret's on this morning. Good morning to Miss Margaret and everything, and I'm sure there'll be others to come on later on in the morning, and as I said a while ago, hope everyone's having a wonderful day thus far, and we want to get our service started with some prayer time. We certainly want to remember everyone's on our prayer list. Uh, it's good to see Brother Terry McGee on with us this morning good morning to you my brother and everything so um and uh like i said we do want to get started with some prayer time and uh, we want to remember everyone's on the prayer list and i know many of us was concerned uh, about brother james uh over the weekend uh, i did let the church know on sunday morning that he was sick and really under the weather when i talked to him on uh uh saturday and everything and then of course i think i talked to him on friday too and everything so uh but i have uh, a good report on brother james brother james uh went to the doctor on monday uh he does not have covid and and that's a good thing and everything but uh he does have bronchitis uh pretty bad but uh the doctors give him some medication and uh talked with him yesterday and he is feeling better um uh, uh sounded more like yourself yesterday and everything but he did say ask the church to continue to pray for him pray that god will just continue to touch and heal him and he said him and miss marie slept most of the day yesterday off and on and uh when i was talking with him many of you know that he had, he's moved in with his son his son's kind of helping look after miss marie uh uh, him and the daughter-in-law, uh, Miss Susan and everything. So, uh, uh, but Brother James had left and gone back over to his and Marie's house. He said they needed some winter clothes. <laughs> and I can understand that. A little cooler outside today and everything. But just continue to pray for Brother James. Pray that God will just continue to anoint him and touch him and heal him and help him to get better. Amen. And uh, we did talk to Brother Jerry uh, on Saturday. Uh, Brother Jerry's doing uh, okay. Uh, he did say that uh, he's having a hard time when he gets up. He's getting really dizzy, um, getting really lightheaded and, and everything. So be in much prayer for Brother Jerry. Uh, still, I think he's having a lot of these side effects coming from the chemo treatments and stuff. All of that, I think, still trying to clear up on him and everything. So just continue uh, to, to pray for him. Also, it was good to see Miss Wendy back with us on Sunday and everything, but continue to pray for her. Amen. Continue to pray that God will continue to touch her. And many of you, if you didn't know, uh, Miss Wendy uh, had a mini stroke and everything. Uh, blood pressure got up kind of high and stuff. And uh, let's pray that that blood pressure will stay down for Miss Wendy. Amen. And uh, pray that God will just continue to touch her and touch her husband, Michael, as well uh, and everything thing just pray for them uh pray that god will just continue to help them and i uh, asked the church to pray for brother keith on sunday he'd be traveling out of town uh he got back in town yesterday he let us know yesterday and uh things didn't go good for his uh meeting i don't think his work meeting so he come back a day early and everything but just continue remember brother keith and prayer as well pray that god will just continue to touch and uh, help him and his family 
and everything and uh continue to pray for uh miss uh miss ann miss ann and brother melvin was unable to be with us on sunday so pray pray for them pray that god will reach down and touch them and uh reach down and touch uh miss ann miss ann now having uh some stomach issues and stuff and everything so just pray just pray for her and and everything and uh just continue to remember all our church folks in prayer pray that god will just continue to anoint and touch our services as well and uh, just just bless and touch our church in a mighty way and he's and he's been doing that and I, i'm just so thankful to god and everything and uh, let's continue remember miss beverly knew uh miss stephanie uh was with us on sunday her and miss margaret but miss beverly now this is uh miss stephanie's mom was unable to be with us and she said she's not uh doing too good and everything so let's remember her in prayer and pray that god will reach down and touch her and help her her and uh just so many uh that we need to remember and uh i talked to brother bob whitaker yesterday and uh and everything and uh brother bob asked us to pray for his wife miss uh miss sandra miss sandra they think uh, has come down with the flu and everything she's got a mild case of the flu uh and everything some things going on there so just be in much prayer for her uh miss melissa's at work right now but i do want y'all to pray for her she's been having some mild migraines this week and everything so continue to pray for her as well and everything but she said she felt okay this morning but uh i know she got up monday morning had a migraine had and it lingered into yesterday so just uh just pray for her she's been battling those things off and on now for a little while uh so just remember her in prayer as well uh remember our good friend uh james hood in prayer uh brother james uh not uh doing good and everything so just remember him in prayer as well uh, I'd like for us to remember the Gelo family. Now, Jarrett Gelo, good friend of mine, Miss Melissa's, went to church with him a uh, pretty good while. His dad uh, recently passed away. So let's just remember that family in prayer as well. Uh, Pastor, just looking kind of over the list here and everything. Let's remember Miss Vivian Crouch in prayer, a member of our church, uh, shut in, uh, been sick. So let's remember her. And uh, there's just so many uh, to remember and everything, uh, so many different things going on in everyone's life and everything. So let's just remember all these needs and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, and everything. And uh, uh, let's remember Doris Hunt. Now, this is a name that uh, Brother Roger gave us, a man he works with. This dear lady's got cancer. So let's just remember her in prayer as well. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And if you have a prayer list in front of you, uh, and everything, uh, you just put your hand on it while we're praying. If not, you pray along with us and pray for the service and pray for our upcoming services as well. And, uh, if there's a need in your life and in, in your heart today and everything, just, just reach your hand to heaven. Now I can't see your hands, but God can see those hands and he sees hearts today. Amen. So, uh, let's, let's just go to the Lord in prayer now amen uh, okay miss wendy just sent me something vivian's doing much better in rehab talking to son and daughter last night amen that's good to hear miss wendy thank you for giving us that update and everything but let's continue to pray for her amen uh, let's go to the lord in prayer our eternal gracious heavenly father we thank you lord we thank you for this day we thank you father for blessing us throughout the night hours lord and yet another beautiful day of life that you blessed us to see, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together across Facebook. Now, I know, Lord, many will watch now. There's some watching now. Some will watch later. Some will watch maybe in the middle of the day, this evening, Lord. Lord, you just put your hand upon this service and bless and touch it just whenever anyone watches it, Father. And Father, we just pray that you'd be honored and glorified by it, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for these many needs 
needs today, Father. Put your hand upon them and touch them, Lord. Thank you for reaching down and touching Brother James, Father. And I ask you to continue to touch and heal him and continue to help Miss Marie to get better, Father. Just anoint them and touch them, Father, like only you can. And I pray for Brother Jerry today, Father. Put your mighty hand upon him and speak to that cancer, Father. Speak to these side effects, Lord. Lord, you just touch him like only you can, Father, and anoint him, Father. And then, Father, I pray for the many others of our church who are sick and afflicted, Father. I pray for Miss Wendy. Thank you for what you're doing for her, Lord. But I ask you to continue to touch her and help her and help Michael, Father. Just put your hand upon both of them, Lord, and anoint them and touch them today, Father. And then, Father, I just thank you for getting Keith back home safely. But, Lord, you know there's things going on in his family, Father. I pray for his daughter, Sky, Lord. Just touch her and help her today, Father. And, Father, we thank you for what you've done for Miss Vivian, Lord. And we ask you to continue to touch and heal her, Father. And, Father, I pray for Miss Sandra today, Father. Speak to that flu, Lord, and help that thing to clear up and to go away, Father. And, Father, I just pray and ask you to reach down and touch Miss Beverly New, Lord, and help her today, Father, and strengthen her today, Lord. And, Father, I just pray for the many others that's on our prayer list, Lord. Ask you to reach down and touch them all. Touch Brother Paul today and help him today, Father, and touch Sister Annette and help her, Father, and Miss Ann today, Father. Put your mighty hand upon her and touch her today, Father, and Brother Melvin, Lord. Lord, I just pray for all of our people today, Father. I pray that you'd anoint them and touch them and give them a great day in the Lord, Lord. And Lord, I just pray and ask you to go with us throughout this service. May everything that we do on here today be pleasing in thy sight and may it bring honor and glory to thy precious holy name. These things we pray and ask all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let Pastor take a drink of water here. Getting a little dry. But I do want to say, in a way of announcements for the church, don't forget about this coming Sunday morning. Now, be in much prayer for Sunday services. Even now, uh, I'd like for you to pray. Amen. We've been having some wonderful services in the house of God. Amen. And I'm just so happy with our services and everything and with our prayer room. We want to encourage you to come out and be a part of our prayer rooms. Amen. Come on out and be a part of or take part in our prayer rooms at 10 o'clock. We have a prayer room for the ladies and a prayer room for the men. So you just come on out and take part with that in it. And if you watch us online long by 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and everything, you you take some time out and you pray while we're praying there in the church. Pray for the service. Pray for any needs that you may have. Pray for our prayer list. Amen. And I do want to say this. Reach out to Pastor and let me know and uh, and everything. And I'll ask Miss Melissa and maybe Miss Wendy too to be watching on Facebook for anything that comes across to any of us uh, in the way of putting something on the prayer list. If you've got a need, I want to open this prayer list up now sometimes we do have to shave it back and everything and, and make room for things but i do want to say this if you've got a need or somebody uh, in your family or something needs prayer please reach out to us with that name and everything and we'll try to put it in our prayer list and keep it there for a little while and pray for those folks amen and uh you be in much prayer for our sunday morning service as well at 10 30 and then next week our remote service now it still says seven o'clock in our bulletin but pastor's going to be doing it in the morning amen and everything so i want you to be in much prayer for those things amen and uh and everything and then i want you to be in much prayer also for our next visitation time now we had visitation this past saturday and uh, and everything and we got out 32 bible tracks and 32 letters uh from the church uh we worked a street and a half over there by the church and everything and we're beginning to canvas that area so i want you to be in much prayer for our next visitation time and our next visitation time is going to be weather permitting november the 5th and uh pastor thinks it i think we're going to have it about one o'clock in the afternoon now uh we've moved it up to one o'clock now i know some of you work some of you are 
not physically able to come, but that's okay. You pray about visitation. Amen. You pray about, uh, about us going out and visiting. Pray that God will lead us to the right places. Get us to knock on the right doors. Amen. And everything. I'm just being honest with you and being truthful with you today. Just pray over our Bible tracks and over our letters. Amen. And over our visitation program. And we're going to try to keep that going even right through the winter months. Every time weather's permitting. Now, pastor's not going to get out, and he's not going to put you out either in any kind of bad weather. But I do want us to be in much prayer for our next visitation time. And that visitation time is going to be November the 5th at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So you be in much prayer uh, for that. And then on November the 13th, we're going to be having our Thanksgiving homecoming. Amen. Now, that's what pastor's calling it. We've not had a homecoming meal this year. Year, but we're going to be having Thanksgiving. We're going to combine the two, and we're just going to have an old-fashioned Thanksgiving homecoming. Amen. And uh, Brother Lonnie, the fellow that come with Brother Bob before, he's going to come. He's going to sing for us. Brother Bob Whitaker is going to come and preach. Uh, Pastor talked to him yesterday evening. He's excited about coming. Brother Lonnie's excited about coming and being with us. And I want to say something to my people right here, right now. I think, Pastors, we're going to have a fill of pew Sunday on that Sunday. Amen. You invite people, invite your friends. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and snatch people out of other people's churches, but people that you know that don't go to church, invite them. Maybe somebody's fell by the wayside. Don't attend church no more. Go to them, invite them to come. Amen. And we're, we're going to just get excited about being in the house of God. Amen. And everything. And pastor was really excited. We had some new young folks this week. Amen. Uh, in the service. And I was really excited to see that and really excited about seeing people come in and seeing people hit, get under the gospel, get saved, get right with God, uh, rededicate their lives, whatever it takes. Amen. I'm just being honest. We just need to turn to God in this hour. Amen. And, uh, I'm just, and I'm just saying, we just need to get out there and we just need to invite people to come to church. Amen. And, and listen, if, and if they say they can't come, invite them to watch us on Facebook. Amen. I'm being honest with you and being truthful with you. I know some people can't come. Some people are physically hindered in some way. But listen, invite them. Uh, with technology, there's all kinds of ways that we can reach out to people. Amen. And I believe we are to reach with this Facebook page. And listen, if we if we have to, we'll, we'll get on YouTube too. Uh, we're talking about that as well. But I want you to be in much prayer for all these services and, and everything and be in much, much prayer uh, for our upcoming in service and for the service on the 13th of November for our visitation for everything concerning the church I just want us to get excited about the house of God and being out and doing things for God amen going forward for his honor and his glory Be, get excited about what Jesus has done for you amen I'm excited about what he's done and what he's doing amen Oh, I hear people all the time, and I just wish I could see God work. Hey, man, open your eyes. God's working. Amen. If we'll just, if we'll just open our eyes and see, God does something for us every day. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. And I just want us to get excited uh, uh, about about God. Amen. And I do know that this is Pastor Appreciation Month, and I want to just take time uh, and, and say to my people, I want to thank you. Uh, there's been some folks that put some things up on Facebook. There's been some folks to say some things to me personally and, and thanking me. Um, the church gave me a nice, nice card here a while back. Been so kind to me and my dear wife, and I want to say thank you. Uh, uh, Pastor loves you today. Amen. I mean that sincerely. I love my people and, and everything. And uh, good morning to you, Miss Paula. Good to see you on with us this morning and everything. Uh, and uh, But I, I do want to say right here. I want to thank my church. I want to thank my church family uh, and everything for all the things that you've done for me and Miss Melissa and, and how kind you've been to us since we've been there and we appreciate it. And, uh, and uh, listen, I want to say this about my church family. You don't only show pastor and his wife how much you appreciate us during this time, just in this month, you show us all year long. Amen. Uh, with uh, We've received some 
uh, like I said, the church gave me a real nice card back on our anniversary, and I appreciated that card. And not only that, but I've received cards down through the through this whole year and everything and uh we're just so excited about seeing god work in ashboro amen and we're excited about the things god is doing amen and i just want to say this morning thank you to my church and pastor wants you to know that he loves you this morning amen i do i want you to know that pastor appreciates you i love you i love those who are able to attend when you can attend and i love you i love those who watch us amen Amen. And everything, all the kind words that many of you say, uh, the comments you make and everything, uh, just, just makes everything worthwhile. Amen. Serving God together. Amen. And it's my honor and my privilege to be Good Samaritan Baptist Church's pastor. And I mean that sincerely from my heart. Uh, it is my honor and it's my privilege. Amen. To be your under shepherd. Amen. I do always want you to remember, I'm just the under shepherd now we all are following the shepherd and that shepherd is jesus christ amen and i don't want to i'm i'm gonna have to get on by step before i get emotional and everything but i and yes miss uh margaret we love you too hun and thank you but this morning i want you to turn with me to the book of psalms this morning psalms chapter number 40 uh, just looking in the Bible this morning and, uh, didn't really, I don't have a prepared message, but God's always got something and, and everything. And, uh, I'm not saying that I've not been studying and, and everything, but, uh, I'm here to tell you thought about this during the night and then turned over here and looked, uh, cause many of you know, pastor works third shift and I've been up, uh, most of the night <laughs> and everything, but I'll get some rest here in a little while. But here in the book of Psalms, chapter 40, the last few weeks, we've been talking about faith and trusting God. And and uh, I just dearly loved the way Brother Terry chimed in last week and gave us that verse over there in the book of Mark. And we kind of run with that last Wednesday evening and uh, last Wednesday morning. Then last Wednesday evening, we uh, we just we just had a good we just had two good services and talked about faith and trusting God and how we're to trust him. And I want us to see something maybe along those lines again this morning. In Psalms chapter 40, the Bible says this, I waited patiently for the Lord. Amen. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Now look. Now listen, after he done all that, listen to verse three. And he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise under our God. Oh, don't you like it? Many shall see it and fear. And now listen to this last part and shall trust in the Lord. There it is. And shall trust in the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we bow before thy throne once again this morning, Father, it is with a grateful heart that we come to you, Lord, just thanking you for this beautiful day of life, Lord. And Lord, we just want to say today that we love you, Lord. We love you today, Lord, because you first loved us. And Lord, you love us even now when we're unlovable, Lord. When we do things and say things and think things, Lord, and, and, and just... Maybe sometimes act out the way we shouldn't. You still love us, Lord, and we thank you today. Father, I'm so thankful that you don't throw the clay away. Lord, I'm just so thankful to you today. I give you honor and praise and glory. And we thank you today too, Lord, for your word, Lord. And now, Lord, I just pray and ask you to bless and touch the reading and the preaching of thy word, Father, and let your word go forth and do that which it's sent forth to do. And let it find that dwelling place and lodging place in our hearts, Father. And Father, I know there's many watching this morning, Father. I pray that you'd speak to those hearts, Father, and help them today. 
And then, Father, I know there's some that'll watch later. There may be some even to watch later down the road, a, a day or two from now. And, Lord, I just pray that if there be one watching now or one watching later that don't know you in the free pardon of sin, Father, I pray this would be the hour in this moment, Lord, you speak to those hearts and draw those folks to you, Lord, and save them before it's eternally everlasting too late. Now, Lord, just go with us throughout the remainder of this service, Father. May everything that we do on Facebook today be pleasing in thy sight, and may it bring honor and glory to thy precious holy name. And, Lord, just reach down and touch the many needs of our church, Father, the many uh, sick and afflicted of our church, Father. Touch them today. Now, Lord, just go with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all these things. And for his sake, amen. Well, you know, when we begin to look at these verses, I said a while ago, along some of the same lines, uh, uh, thinking about faith and trust in God. And, and we look here, and the, and the psalmist David, he writes, and he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, pastors probably touched on some of these things before, no doubt, uh, especially there in the church and, and even here on the in our remote services, uh, waiting on God. Amen. Uh, there's always a reward for waiting on God. Yeah, I believe that. And we're going to look at that here in just a minute. But we want to wait on God. Now, waiting's not always easy. Amen. No, it ain't easy for pastor. Amen. I'm being honest with you this morning. Waiting on God is not an easy thing. But how many of us know we have to wait on God? Amen. God moves in his time and not in our time. God can see tomorrow. God can see the next day. God can see next week. And God uh, he works things out where he knows they're going to come out to the best. Amen. Uh, I believe that. And he works them out to, to work out for us, uh, when the time is right. Amen. And he's the one that knows when that time is. And I know many of us, we want to see things right now. Uh, we live in an instant world, uh, where everything's instant. Uh, we want it yesterday, but God doesn't work that way. Amen. Uh, and sometimes God will say, wait. And, and listen, he, I believe he's got three, uh, three answers for us. I believe God always answers. I believe he answers either yes, no, or wait. And uh, I'm being honest. I'm being truthful with you this morning. Uh, I believe those are three answers that God can give. Uh, and, and the hardest one of those is for us to deal with, I believe, is the waiting part. But see, God knows, and God knows, and he can see what's coming down the road. Amen. He sees what's around the corner. Uh, and here he said, I waited patiently, the psalmist David said, for the Lord. Oh, don't you like that verse? I waited patiently for who? For the Lord. Amen. Uh, and then you notice what he said. He says, he inclined unto me. You notice what he's saying? God came to where he was. How many of you remember the day that God came to where you was? Amen. Aren't you thankful that he came? Amen. Aren't you thankful that he come knocking on your heart's door? And even more so, aren't you thankful for the day that you opened that door and you allowed Jesus Christ in? You repented of your sins and you received Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Amen. And he's been your Lord and Savior ever since. Amen. Well, we believe in eternal salvation. I'm being honest with you this morning. That's what we believe in. Amen. I believe once saved, always saved. Uh, Jesus said, uh, no man's able to pluck you out of my hand and my father, which gave me them is greater than all. And no one's able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. You know how I view that. And I know I've said this before. I believe I'm in the Lord's hand and I believe he's in the father's hand. And I don't believe nobody can open Jesus's hand. And I don't believe nobody can open the father's hand. Amen. Nobody can pluck us out. Amen. Aren't you thankful? for that today. Amen. I'm being honest with you this morning and being truthful. But here he said he inclined unto me and he heard my 
cry. Aren't you glad that God hears you? Amen. And I touched along these lines on Sunday. I'm glad God hears me when I pray. Amen. Uh, listen, and sometimes I don't even have, listen, we don't have to verbalize it. God's a heart reader. Amen. And he's a mind reader. Amen. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful with you. I'm glad he hears the cry sometimes that I cry within me. Amen. Sometimes those things are inside and they just come out as tears. They don't always come out as words. Amen. But I'm glad God is a God that understands tears. Amen. Flowing from our face. Amen. I'm glad God can read my heart today. He knows what's in my heart today. He knows what's in your heart today. He knows the burdens that we're trying to carry. What we need to do is take them burdens off and hand them to him. Amen. He hears you today. Hand those things over to him. Amen. But then I notice that he He gives us a reward here. Amen. Uh, the psalmist David talks about uh, being waiting on God. The first thing you notice is by waiting on God, uh, what happened? God come to him. Amen. He come to right where he was. Then he heard his cry or he heard his prayer. Amen. Why? Because the psalmist David waited on God. Here's the reward. Amen. He's waiting on God. And then you notice here's another part. He brought me up. Oh, I love that part. Amen. He brought me up. God didn't bring him down, but he brought him up. Now, God can bring people down, but I'm thankful that God, but I believe, prefers to bring us up. What did he do? He brought him up also out. Not only does he bring us up, but he can bring us out. Amen. Is that not what he done for me and you? He did the same thing for the children of Israel. He brought them up and out of the bondage in Israel uh, and down in Egypt. Amen. I'm being honest this morning. I'm glad God can bring us up and he brings us out. Amen. And what did he do for the psalmist David? He brought him out of what? Out of a horrible pit. Oh, how many of us even after being saved, we find ourselves sometimes in a pit. Amen. You say, what you talking about, pastor? Uh, listen, sometimes we get down, we get out, and we get in a pit. Amen. We get in depression. Uh, we get into oppression. Uh, sometimes we get uh, down in a pit trying to tote the heavy load. Amen. I'm being honest, but I'm glad today that I've got a God that didn't bring us out out of that horrible pit. Amen. Sometimes we get those cares on us. Uh, many of us know today we try to code our own cares. We try to tote our own burdens. But listen, we can't do it today. And we fall down under that load and we get under when we get down in a pit. But I'm thankful today that I've got a God that I can call on, that he hears me and he does what? He comes to where I am and he hears my cry and he brings me up and he brings me out and he brings me up and out of what? Out of that horrible pit. Amen. He gets those things off of me. He gets those things off of you. He hears your cry. He comes to where you are. Amen. And then look at this. He done it again. He brought him out of what? Out of the miry clay. Do you ever find it hard to walk in this life? Do you ever find it sometimes you just can't walk? Amen. Aren't you glad that God will bring you out of that miry clay and he'll free you up? He'll wash you off. Aren't you glad for that today? Amen. I'm glad I know, I'm glad I know a God that can. Amen. And will. I know the God. Amen. Of this universe. And I'm so glad. And his name's Jesus. And what did he do for the psalmist David? The psalmist David said, I was in a pit and he brought me up and he brought me out. Aren't you glad that God will pick you up when you're down? Amen. Aren't you glad today that God will reach down and he'll come to where you are and he'll pick you up and he'll set you on his shoulders and he'll carry you up and he'll carry you out. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that today? Amen. And he'll bring you up and out of that miry clay. And then you notice what he said here. And he set my feet upon a rock. Oh, when we begin to sink, first he gets us out of that miry clay, and then he sets our feet on a rock, amen? He establishes our foundation, and honey, our foundation today is Jesus Christ, amen? All of the ground is sinking sand, amen? 
Uh, I'm being honest with you today. You better not put your roots in this world. You better not put your trust in this world. You better put your trust in the rock. And that rock today is Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm being honest. He said he set my feet upon a rock. Amen. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. Aren't you glad today that our foundation is sure? Amen. And it's steady. Amen. I'm being honest. I'm being truthful. He's our anchor today. Amen. And I'm thankful for him. And didn't you notice what he said? And he established my goings. Now we talked about this on Sunday. He establishes the way I go. And what way should we go, church? Y'all should remember this from Sunday. We ought to be going God's way. Amen. Not our way, not the world's way, but God's way. Amen. I'm being honest. He's established our, our goings. He set my feet upon a rock. He got us up out of that miry clay, out of that horrible pit. He's brought us up. He's brought us out. He come to where we was. He's heard our cry, but all because we waited patiently on him. And now he's done what? He set our feet on a solid rock. Amen. He set our feet upon a rock and he's done what he's established our goings he's established the way that we are to go and the way we are to go is is we are to be following him amen we don't need to get out in front of him that's what it means to wait on the lord amen we need to wait for him to move honey i got something to tell you the sheep can't move until the shepherd starts to move amen i'm being honest he goes before his sheep amen oh yes and why? Because when we get out in front of God or we get out in front of our shepherd, we become prey for, for the wolf or we become prey for Satan. Amen. I, oh, yes. Uh, you, what did he, what does he teach us in the book, in the book of Peter? What did he say for us to be? He said, be vigilant, be sober for your adversary. As a roaring lion goes about seeking whom he may do what? That he may devour. Satan wants you to get out, wants me to get out and get to running in front of Jesus. Amen. Get out in front of him. There's no protection. Amen. But honey, I got something to tell you. When we stay in step with the shepherd and we stay behind and we wait for him to move and we wait for him to give us direction and we wait for him to show us the way to go. Honey, I'll tell you now, he'll never lead us wrong. He'll never lead us astray. Uh, my, uh, my pastor, Brother Bob Whitaker, told me one time there was nowhere the grace of God can, that would take me, that it couldn't keep me. Amen. Aren't you thankful today for the grace of God that leads you and guides you and it keeps you today. Amen. And listen, we need to stay back behind the shepherd. We're to follow him. He's not to follow us. Amen. He's not to go our way. We're to go his way. And if he goes to the right, we're to follow him. If he goes to the left, we're to follow him. Amen. If he goes straight on, we're to follow him. Amen. But honey, I'll tell you one way he'll never lead you. He'll never lead you or me either one astray. Amen. I'm being honest. He'll never lead us to do the wrong thing. Amen. And that's what we need to do. We need to wait patiently for the Lord. Why? Because he'll come to where we are and he'll hear our cry and he'll bring us up and he'll also bring us out of that horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set our feet upon a rock. Oh, amen. And he does what? He establishes the way we should go. He established my goings. Amen. He's my shepherd today. And I hope you can say he's yours today. And then look in verse three. And he had put a new song in my mouth. Oh, I like that, don't you? God changed my speech. Amen. And God should have changed your speech. Amen. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you and truthful with you today. Christians, uh, when we say things that we are not to, and I know what people are thinking, cuss words and all of that stuff. Honey, I got something to tell you. Uh, we need to put all that stuff away. Amen. But then he talks about filthy communication also out of our mouths. And I know what we think there too. Uh, but let me say something to you. Filthy communication, not only I believe could be cuss words or gossip and stuff 
stuff like that, but it can be other things too, amen? Uh, when we say bad things about other people, or especially when we say bad things about our brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we shouldn't do that, amen? I'm being honest, I'm being truthful. God changed our speech, amen? And when we say things that we are not say, and we let this tongue get to wagon, how many of you know that sometimes your tongue can get to flying, amen? And uh, we need to ask God to help us with our tongue, amen? Uh, maybe pastor will do a, a message on the tongue, amen? I'm being honest, uh, being truthful, but we do. And I know this is not popular, but we need to ask God to help us with our speech and to help us with our mouth, amen? Uh, that's what he's saying. He put a new song, amen? I talk a new way. Uh, I don't talk the old way anymore. Uh, we're to put that mess away and, and put it far from us, amen? And when we do say things that we are not say, we need to ask God to forgive us and ask the people around us to forgive us, amen? Uh, I'm being honest, but you notice what he says, even praise under our God. I like that, don't you? Uh, when we get ready to say something bad about somebody, we are just praise God. Amen. Satan wants us to say something bad about somebody so he can add more to it and keep on going. But what we ought to do is when we're getting ready to say something bad, we ought to just say, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Oh, I'm just being honest. I love you, Lord. Well, that's what we ought to do. Amen. Uh, I'm being truthful. Uh, start to praise God and that won't leave no room for anything else. Uh, and everything to be coming out of our mouth. Praise who? Praise our God. Aren't you glad today that he's our God? Oh, the thing I like about God, he's omnipresent. Amen. That means he's everywhere. Amen. He's in your home with you today. He's here in my home with me today. He's on Facebook with us today, having church. Amen. We're worshiping him collectively, but just in different places. Amen. That's okay. Uh, I'm being honest. That, that's okay. You know why? Because he's getting the honor and he's getting the glory for it. Amen. We've gathered where? We've gathered on Facebook today. And he said, where there are two or three gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He's here in my midst. He's in your midst today. Amen. Aren't you thankful for that? And we ought to praise him. Amen. And give him honor and give him praise. And then you notice what he says about that. He says, many shall see it. Oh, I thought about that a whole lot. And that verse comes alive even more now. You know why? Because we're on Facebook and people can see us on Facebook. Amen. And people can see us going to church. And, and listen, I'm being honest. Many shall see it. Uh, listen, when you get up on Sunday morning and you start out for Good Samaritan Baptist Church, honey, I got something to tell you. Your neighbors know where you're going. When you walk out the door and you're dressed and you got your Bible under your arm or, and maybe the kids, you've got them dressed or, or maybe you and the husband's dressed and you both got your Bibles and you're getting in the car. Honey, they know where you're going. They ain't dumb. Amen. I'm being honest, uh, many shall see it, it says. Listen, that's a praise unto God, amen? You know what? You don't have to say a word sometimes. Do you know many times we're, we're the only Bible that most people ever read? Oh, I want people to see Jesus in me. Don't you want them to see him in you? Many shall see it, the Bible says, and fear. Oh, there's not much fear these days for God. Oh, but I got something to tell you. If they see what God's doing in your life and my life, it ought to bring a reverent fear. Amen. Oh, listen, friends, I think we ought to have a reverent fear of what God can do. He controls the very breath that we breathe. Amen. I'm being honest. He does. He controls the very breath that you breathe and that I breathe. Amen. And we need to fear God today. Amen. And then you notice this last part, and we're going to close right here with this. It says, and me, and it says there many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Don't you like that? There's that faith. There's that trust in the Lord. Oh, my friend. I want somebody to trust in the Lord. Amen. I don't want to go to heaven by myself. I want to carry some folks with me. Amen. And listen, how about that person who you never speak to? How about that person who always watches? Amen. Is watching you, watching me. Amen. And, and listen, 
Let's let them see Jesus. Amen. You know why? Because they'll see that and they'll fear and they'll do what? They'll trust in the Lord. They'll have faith in God. Amen. They'll come to the Lord Jesus Christ by hopefully by seeing something in me and you. The world's looking for something different. And listen, we can show them that something different if we'll just let our light so shine. That's what the Bible teaches is let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven, that they might see and listen, the good works, the good works comes from what? Comes from the deposit of the Holy Spirit. There's nothing good about us except for that. Amen. The one that's leading us, our shepherd leads us to do those things. Amen. And many shall see that. Amen. And glorify our father, which is in heaven. Many shall see that and they'll do what? Hopefully they'll trust God. Amen. I'm being honest with you this morning. Listen, folks, we want people to see Christ in us. I want people to see the Lord in me. I hope that's your prayer today, too. And if you're watching today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this old preacher boy could only ask you one thing. What are you waiting on? Do you hear God today? Do you hear him knocking? Oh, my friend, maybe that knock's got a little quieter since Sunday. Maybe you'd say, Pastor, I watch you on Sundays. I watch you on Wednesdays. Uh, but every time I watch you, it seems like that knock's getting a little quieter, a little quieter. Oh, my friend, don't waste time. Don't waste time. Now's the time. If God's dealing with you, if God's knocking at your heart's door, today's the hour, today's the moment. Why not open that door and let him in? and repent of your sins. You know what that means? That means to turn from your sins and turn to God. Amen. That's what it means. Turn to Jesus Christ. You know what? If you'll ask him to save you, he will. Amen. And all it takes is just a simple prayer from you. And you've got to say it. You've got to open your door. you got to pray. you got to talk to God for you. I had to talk to him for me. Amen. I'm being honest this morning. All you got to do is just listen. You can talk to him just like you talk to anybody else. Amen. Jesus is listening. Amen. We just simply got to open the door and just simply in your own words, say, Lord, please forgive me a sinner. Please forgive me. And then just simply believe that he died for you and he was buried, and on the third day he arose again. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart, God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. You know what God's looking for? God's looking for a heart change. Amen. And honey, I got something to tell you. You let Jesus in and ask him to save you. He'll change your heart. Amen. He'll change the way you see things. He'll help you today if you'll ask him. Amen. Will you let him in? Are you willing to open that door? Is he ringing your doorbell today? You can only open that door. I can't open it for you. No one else can either. Amen. You've got to open that door. You've got to let him into your life and into your heart. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we bow before thy throne this morning once again, Father, I just thank you for these few moments, Lord, that we've had to share your precious word, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the thoughts. And Lord, I thank Pray that if anything's been said in error, Lord, that you'd strike it from the books. And Father, I just pray that, that your word to go forth and do that which it's sent forth to do. And may you be honored and glorified by it today. And Father, I pray for anyone that's watching now. Pray for anyone that's watching later, Lord, that may not know you in the free pardon of sin. Father, I pray this would be the day and the moment and the hour that you'd speak to them, Father, and, and, and just draw them to you and save them, Lord, before it's eternally everlasting too late. And now, Lord, I just pray and ask you to Continue to bless our little church, Father. Have your hand upon it, Lord, and upon those who make it up, the homes that make it up, Father. Touch each and every home, Lord, and bless it in a mighty way. Not only those who are in attendance, Lord, but those who watch as well, Father. Touch those homes today, Lord. 
And then, Father, I pray for the many needs of our church. Lord, meet those needs today, Lord, and help them. And, Lord, we just want to say one more time today, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And, Lord, we just can't say it enough. We love you today. And thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, what you're going to do. We just give you the honor and praise and glory for it all. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray and ask all these things. And for his sake, amen. Well, it's certainly good to have been on with you this morning. I hope you enjoyed the service. It was good to have each and every one of you that were on with us now. Uh, it'll be good uh, for all of you that uh, will be on with us later and everything. And just hope you enjoy the service. And as far as the pastor knows, we're going to continue to do this on Wednesday mornings and everything. And um, we just hope each and every one of you can join us uh, and everything. It was good to have Brother Terry on with us today. Good to as always, brothers, see you on with us, Sister Paula. I know Miss Margaret, and I think Miss Wendy's been on with us this morning. And no doubt, Carol and Bob, the folks she looks after, has been on with her. So it's been good to have all of you on this morning and everything. And I hope each and every one of you has a wonderful day in the Lord. And I hope God blesses you in a mighty way today. And uh, if you, and I just want to say this: if you live in and around the Asheboro area, and you want to come out on Sundays and be part of our service, come on out and be part of our service there at 10 o'clock for our prayer rooms and then 1030 will be our worship hour. So you come on out and you take part with us in the service. We'll be glad to have you if you're passing through and you just want to stop by and visit. Just stop by and visit with us. We're at 844 Palatine Avenue there in Asheboro, uh, North Carolina. And we'd love to have you to come and be a part of our services. Amen. And I want to encourage my folks to come out on Sunday and uh, be a part of our service if you can. And also, I want you to remember all our upcoming events in prayer. Amen. Uh, just continue to remember uh, this coming uh, weekend. And then remember our visitation will be again on November the 5th. Remember that and be in much prayer for that. And then on November the 13th, you be in much prayer. We're going to be having our Thanksgiving homecoming. Amen. That's what we're going to be having that day. And Brother Bob Whitaker is going to be with us. Brother Lonnie going to come sing for us and everything. So you be in much prayer for that service too. And don't forget what I said. Invite somebody to come to church with you that day. Invite them anytime. But I think that Sunday, and I'll be talking more about this on this coming Sunday, we're going to have a fill of pew Sunday. Amen. As many people as you can get to come with you. Amen. If you want to fill one pew, two pews, whatever. Amen. You do it. Amen. And we're we're just going to have a good time in God's house. Amen. And the uh, pastor just wants to say to you, and I'm, then I'm going to get off here and go get me some rest. Uh, two things that I always like to remind you. Number one, God loves you today. Amen. And Pastor Jeff and Miss Melissa love you too. And if we can be of a help to you, please don't hesitate. You reach out to us, let us know, and we'll try to help you in any way that we can. Amen. So everyone have a wonderful day. God bless you. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye now. <laughs>